Bonne locale, my garden of roses. I think it's time we talk about release the memo and the growing Obama era and F FBI department and Department of Justice. So currently all mainstream media outlets except for Fox News are doing all they can to avoid talking about this. Or if they do talk about it, they're spending all their effort trying to point to Russian bots pushing the release the memo hashtag. But it's actually filed record at this point within Congress that the Clinton campaign and Clinton Foundation paid Fusion GPS to hire former British spy Christopher Steele and create the largely false Trump dossier. For those of you who don't know, the Trump dossier was the source from which we got such beautiful lies, such as Trump enjoys having hookers pee on him in Russia, as well as most of the Trump-Russia collusion hoax. This dossier was the primary evidence submitted to the FBI for the purpose of Special Counsel Robert Mueller's investigation into the Trump-Russia hoax. And while the narrative that Trump's campaign was colluding with or influenced by Russia was being pushed by the mainstream media, especially across the last six months as the um, Mueller investigation continued, uh, more and more evidence has actually come out not only against that narrative, but that the FBI and Justice Department under Obama was colluding with the Clinton campaign as well as private intelligence firms to lie about, discredit, and create contingencies against the possible election of Donald Trump to the White House. They were severely interested in painting this man as absolutely un-American, as a possible Hitler. There was so much evidence, especially in the text messages uh, between Peter Strzok and his mistress. Of all the evidence that we've seen, though, there are two stories that rise to the top of concern for Congress. The first of which being those text messages sent between Peter Strzok and his mistress, uh, Lisa Page. Uh, Peter Strzok, of course, being a former FBI agent and fired investigator on the Mueller-Trump in Russia investigation team. Uh, and he was removed for showing such severe bias in text messages, completely pro-Clinton and anti-Trump, that these messages became quite damning in their own right. But as damning as those text messages have been, there are also five months of text messages that have gone completely missing mysteriously after a supposed glitch within the system that stores messages from FBI-issued mobile phones was brought to light. These text messages encompass all the messages sent between Peter Strzok and Lisa Page between December 14th, 2016 and May 17th, 2017, the day Robert Mueller was appointed as special counsel for the Russia investigation. Not that there's anything mysterious or suspect about that. I mean, the fact of the matter is, Peter Strzok was speaking about contingencies and insurance policies against then-candidate Donald Trump becoming president and, you know, eventually President Trump, as well as choreographing news outlets for supporting Clinton and spreading disinformation about Donald Trump from the Trump-Russia dossier. In a dump of over 50,000 text messages released by Congress today, evidence has also come out that Peter Strzok had plans to keep Donald Trump out of office entirely due to his bias against the man. Strzok also spoke about deleting his texts with uh, Miss Page, bringing this supposed glitch into question. Now, notably, no one else's phones in the FBI seem to be missing their records of text messages. It's only the messages between, you know, sent from Peter Strzok's phone that are missing, which only brings this glitch comment commentary out of the FBI into further question. And the FBI at this point, as well as the Justice Department, are in absolute need of deep investigation. Uh, it was uh, from the Strzok text messages that we recently discovered there was actually a team within the uh, FBI and Justice Department, a so-called secret society as described by the texts, 
whose entire ideas and goal was to keep Donald Trump from being president and as president, keep him under investigation and under the thumb of their interests and desires. Now, the other important piece of evidence against the Mueller investigation is the so-called FISA memo, a four-page summary that was released to the House of Representatives last Thursday night. Despite the confidentiality to which representatives are subject to regarding it, the number of representatives that have come out talking about it on the news, on Twitter, have confirmed to a certain degree that this memo identifies clear and systematic abuse of the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act system under the Obama administration by the Department of Justice and FBI to spy on Americans, including but not limited to Donald Trump and his campaign team. As much as the mainstream media has done everything they can to push a narrative that the uh, release the memo hashtag is entirely the purpose or entirely created by Russian bots attempting to create disinformation, nothing could be further from the truth. It has been remarkably grassroots and everyone from representatives Gates and Trey Gowdy and uh, um, uh, uh, fucking Page from Iowa, I can't remember his first name, have come out talking about this because all of this is extremely troubling. Both the Judiciary Committee and the uh, House Special Intelligence Committee are up in are up in arms, are at war with each other. The Democratic halves and the Republican halves being completely divided on these subjects. 65 representatives signed a letter with Representative Matt Gates in order to demand that the uh, chairman of the House Special Intelligence Committee release this memo. And uh, unfortunately, uh, Devin Nunez is really twiddling his thumbs with it. He's not responding well. He hasn't sent it to the FBI, although I highly doubt what the FBI is saying is true at this point. I, the FBI has never been a trustworthy uh, uh, intelligence outlet. For one, uh, despite their origins as an investigative unit, and an investigative arm of the FBI, excuse me, an investigative arm of the uh, Justice Department. In 1924, when J. Edgar Hoover was appointed to the uh, director's position, he basically went against everything that the presidents before he was elected want, or excuse me, appointed wanted by hiring as many former Secret Service and CIA agents, Treasury Department operatives as he could in order to have just as much financial information gathering and he basically built what amounts to a secret police within the United States. And while the FBI has been investigated multiple times, nothing has ever really come of it. And at this point, we're seeing just how corrupt it really has gotten. Uh, Democratic representatives at this point are pushing this Russian bots narrative as hard as they can, saying that Twitter is awash with them, trying to make these statements about the memo. However, there are just too many people on the Republican side coming out. And one thing I want you to look out for, one thing I want you to think about, is something that Edward Snowden originally said. And normally, I don't agree with everything Edward Snowden says. I think the guy can be a little fucking boisterous and stupid. But the fact of the matter is, this is all relating to the uh, the recently uh, passed, this uh, the uh, Bill 702, the renewal of the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, uh, recently passed the House and Senate. And here's the thing. If you see that get vetoed by the president, then we're certainly seeing uh, some partisan politics going on on the Republican side. However, I don't think that's what we're going to see. What I'm looking at at this point, what I'm seeing at this point, there are multiple ways that the memo could be released. For example, the president has ultimate authority over uh, confidentiality and can release it at will. So if it falls into the hands of the president I, president, I wouldn't be surprised to see him release this. Now, 
failing that, there is the ability for the House of Representatives House Intelligence, uh, Special Intelligence Committee to vote on the releasing this to the public. But even if they don't vote on it, any one of the, of the uh, members of the House Intelligence Committee or House of Representatives is completely free to read that memo into the uh, House record. And the fact that that hasn't happened yet does concern me. It makes me wonder just how sensitive the information is. And if we're seeing the Republicans playing not only against the Democrats, but against Trump as well, trying to force his hand, here's the thing. I don't trust any of these people, and you shouldn't either. So while we haven't seen it yet, I do get the impression that we're going to see it soon one way or the other, because I would totally believe one or two Republican representatives lying, but 65 Republican representatives coming out and saying, after reading this memo, we need to do things by the book and have this released to the American public? That comes into question for me. We're going to see this memo soon. Mark my words. Uh, I said it during my stream on this past Saturday, and I'm going to say it again. We're very likely to see this before the end of the month. And if it is as damning, if it is as explosive as they say it is, uh, the Trump-Russia investigation might lead to one of the most wasteful things I've heard people from Congress demanding, and that is a second special investigation into the Trump-Russia investigation. That's not what I want at all. I want these special investigations to be thrown out the window, and instead for private investigations such as those done by Project Veritas, and uh, companies funded by former Fox News anchors uh, to actually do the research necessary uh, to expose just what is going wrong. Because it's, I mean, it's, it's really coming to a point where everything Trump said about draining the swamp and the necessity to drain the swamp that is uh, Washington politics and intelligence has become because if we can't trust the FBI and we can't trust the Department of Justice, how are we able to trust anything out of the intelligence community in the United States? This is a huge problem, and it's only going to be unfolding further, and as it does, I'm going to be explaining it to you. Now, if you have any questions or comments, do please comment below. I will be reading comments on my Saturday stream and answering them accordingly. Uh, but otherwise, thank you so very much for watching, and I will catch you next time. Bonsoir.